If you're building a data center full of Linux systems, then you'll find that you have a lot of rack-mounted servers that don't have a keyboard, they don't have a mouse, they don't have a monitor attached to them, which means that management of these devices is going to be a little bit more challenging. You couldn't even put a monitor and keyboard in there if you wanted. There's generally not a lot of room that's in a rack in a data center somewhere. This data center is often also in another building. It's on another floor. It's somewhere that's not easy to get to. And so remote management becomes very, very important. You want some way to have interactive control to that server. You want some way to be able to make changes and have those changes take effect immediately. One common way to manage a Linux server is with a local client called SSH that stands for Secure Shell. This is part of the OpenSSH client, which is the SSH command, and the SSH server, which runs on the server device. That is the SSHD. This allows you to have an encrypted console session to this remote device. And from the console prompt, of course, you can do anything you'd like. It also is very platform independent. You can SSH into not only Linux systems, but other operating systems as well. It's very easy to use. You simply connect to a remote IP address, and you then have access to the console on that particular device. It's already running on most Linux distributions, which makes it a universal utility and one that you can probably use right out of the box. Let's say you're running on your Linux system at home. You're relaxing after a day at work. You're on your Ubuntu desktop, and you get a call that you need to access a server that's back at work. And the easiest way to do that from a terminal perspective is to use SSH. So to do that, we're going to start up a terminal session. And I'm going to SSH. And in this case, I know the IP address of the server that I'd like to connect to, which is 10.1.10.55. Now, one of the other options that you need to make available to this is the login prompt for you. And my login name on that particular server is Professor. And when I hit Enter, it's going to try to access that particular host. And if this is the first time I've accessed the host, it provides you with a fingerprint that you can then compare to the host itself and make sure there's no man in the middle or anybody intercepting this encrypted communication. I've confirmed this and made sure that is the correct fingerprint. So I'm going to continue connecting. And it now asks me for the password for the username that I previously provided. I put in my password and hit Enter. And now I have a login prompt on that machine. And I can perform whatever functions I might need on that particular host. So I can still stay at home, but still administer all of the things on that computer that is remote to me all through this command line connection. Another common way of accessing your remote Linux devices is using something called VNC. That stands for Virtual Network Computing. VNC is an encrypted connection to this remote device, very similar to encryption that's used with SSH. But unlike SSH, the VNC connection is a graphical connection to that remote device. This is another type of platform independent method of communicating. So you can connect from Windows devices to Linux devices to Mac OS 10 devices all using the standard VNC connection. There are many, many different VNC variants, many different servers and clients you can use. And you can play around with the ones that are available for your operating system and see which ones are most comfortable for you to use. This is also already included with most distributions. If it's not already installed, it's a simple few keystrokes to type in the installation and get your VNC server or your VNC client running on your desktop. We'll take that same scenario again of being at home on your Ubuntu desktop. And we're going to choose, I already have a remote desktop client already enabled on my machine. And in fact, it already has the configuration in here for my OpenSUSE server. If we look at the configuration of this, we can edit to see what's in there. I've configured it with the IP address that it needs to connect to, including the port numbers that are open for the VNC server that's running on that remote device. I put in my authentication credentials and how I would like the screen to look once I connect. And when I click the Connect button, the view is going to be very different than it was before. Now it's a graphical front end to that device. And if I put in my credentials, make sure I spell them all right and get the right ones there. And my password now begins a normal remote session as if I was local to that machine. And so I have the same graphical displays. I have the same views of this. You can see this is the OpenSUSE desktop, very different 
than the connection that's on the back end, which is my Ubuntu desktop. So now I'm able to get access to all of these different machines all using a graphical display. And if I need to make changes that would be difficult to do at the command line, this might be a better solution for that remote management.